you're driving down this farm lane that, like all farm lanes, is lovingly filled with ditches and bumps, and you're not quite sure where you are. You feel like maybe you've made a wrong turn, and so you're coming down around the loops, down the hill, and then at that bottom where you take that left, and you can finally see the property open up in front of you. It's when you can see that you didn't make a wrong turn. You're in the right place. It was actually established as a hunting lodge many, many moons ago. Dr. Charles Singleton, who was a famous scholar of Dante, came here in the 60s and saw the beauty of this place. It's 58 acres, but because it's in a little valley, it feels much bigger. And the upper portions are forested, and the lower area is agricultural area. Going through the entire property is a stream, which we call McDaniel Run. The great thing about the Singleton Matthews property is that it allows students to apply their classroom learning in the great outdoors. Dr. Charles Singleton's dream was to create a retreat for art, for conservation, for agriculture. The school acquired the property in the late 80s, and we really started diving into restoring the property about four years ago. We've planted hundreds of trees. We have established the pavilion structure for outdoor learning. So little by little, we've been creating a space for students to come. Uh, about three years ago, we decided to invest in hiring Dr. Ellie Engel to establish a student farm. I did not garden as a child. Um, I grew up in a large family. I was one of five kids. So we grew up on a lot of mac and cheese and frozen chicken nuggets. My mother would be so appalled if she <laughs> could hear me say that. The plants were all started by my sustainable agriculture students in the spring. They found out what plants we needed. I took them to a local garden store where they helped me spend probably too much money on seeds. <laughs> and then they literally started the seeds in little seed trays. And the food from there does go to students either through the dining hall or through the on-campus food pantry or just straight into their hands. <laughs> what makes McDaniel Special and the Environmental Studies Department in particular is our focus on natural resources. We've had a number of students come out and do research projects trying to evaluate the potential for reintroducing endangered species. Tree of Heaven are an exotic species from Japan and they essentially outcompete all the other native trees. We're going in and girdling them. You put a belt around a tree, you remove the bark where that belt is, and the tree will die within a year. And at the same time that we girdle the tree, we're also planting native trees, native bushes. One torch lights many fires. As a professor, I believe it's my contribution to helping make the world a better place. But I have realized over time that it's not my actions that are ultimately going to have the big reaction. It's through my students. We expect that most of our students are going to be tomorrow's decision makers, educators. Effective policy makers, I think they always put it in like those boxes of their jobs, but anybody can be a change agent. We are here using the planet and its resources, and so I think through forest conservation and restoration, we're giving back. It's a way of paying it forward, and that's what we're trying to do here.